Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. I'm your host, Bilal Khan, and I have here with us Saad Taslim. Welcome back to Houston. Zakla khair, good to be here. This is one comment that you did get to see. Yeah. And uh, and I, I found it interesting <laughs> and I wanted us to discuss it. So I'm just going to go right ahead into it. Let's talk about this I comment. I can't wait. <laughs> okay. So this comment is on YouTube. Uh, for the video, what is Islamic fashion? And it is by Khalid bin Walid. The Khalid bin Walid? The, well, let's see. I mean, it's about 1500, 1500 know, right? years maybe, late, but. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe somebody invented a time machine, went back in time, he'd learned English and uh, came back. Or maybe it's Khalid and his dad's name is Walid. Oh, that's possible too. Like Sheikh Walid's son? Like his yeah. name is Khalid and there his you go. dad's name is Is Walid. it him? Did he leave this comment? <laughs> you gotta ask Sheikh Walid. <laughs> <laughs> It would be pretty funny if he did. Um, so the comment goes as such. It says, uh, the interesting thing about your style, Saad, is no one would be able to identify you as a Muslim at a glance. You mm. could easily be some trendy skater kid or whatever. I mean, you are kind of a trendy skater. Okay, kid. hold on. I, that's my first issue with this comment. Okay. You don't like trendy skater kid? No, like that's not my style. Like I, I don't dress like a skate. Like, there's aspects of me Look, that you are skateboard. That you are, got flat shoes. That's skater. Yeah, kid. but these, so there's aspects of the way I dress that is, I guess, has some skater ish ish stuff. But to just classify me as a skater, kid, like I don't know. Okay, um, or whatever. What's <laughs> <laughs> what's in your heart will manifest in your limbs, words, and outward appearance. Men should be proud to show they are Muslim, <laughs> not be obsessed with fitting in. Yep. Why don't you teach us something worthwhile for the youth? <laughs> you really are wasting everyone's time with this rubbish. So obviously, just just by that word, we know that the person ain't American. Rubbish. I mean, you know, seems like that. Seems that way. All men need to know is cover the aura, look presentable, and not imitate the kuffar. Oh yes, and grow their beard more than a fistful length. Like you're out, bro. Uh, I you're I'm out. out. I'm sorry, bro. I'm out of uh, here. I'm pretty sure I'm out too. Uh, so all men. Okay, and um, oh yes, grow their beard a fistful length. We aren't trying to be models on the catwalk. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad to see a graduate from Medina wasting his time when he could be teaching far more useful things and actually benefiting people. All right. <laughs> This is like now, there's so many layers to that comment. Like this, this we, we is, could do, we could do like a, a sharh, you know, like an explanation. And you, yeah, you know, you break down like hadith, for example, uh -huh. word for word, and like sentence by sentence. We could literally just do that with this comment. So, uh, I mean, I found this comment to be entertaining, but then uh, uh, it turns out that you actually, um, you actually love this comment. Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite. You're comments. like, it's a beautiful comment. This is great. This is a great comment. Okay. So give me your thoughts on this. Okay, What's I'll, happening here? So I'll tell you why it's a great comment. Okay. Because this comment, it almost like fully encompasses misconception after misconception, misunderstanding mm -hmm. after misunderstanding. You can literally like sentence by sentence, break it down and, you know, and, and, and get benefit out of it, ironically. So the idea <laughs> of being identified as a Muslim, what is a Muslim yeah, so identity? There you go. So the interesting thing about your style side is no one would be able to identify you as a Muslim. Like what would you have to wear uh -huh. to be identified as a Muslim? You need to have a shirt that says Islam. That does that mean necessarily that you're Muslim? Possibly. I mean, maybe, or you could dress up like a Jedi, a Jedi Knight. Yeah. Okay. Well, it depends. Do you want to be Sith or you're revealing your nerd card? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> or you can dress up like uh, the Elven Kings of uh, Rivendell. That's it. That's it. Now you lost me. You went too far. What? The uh, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, too 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 far in a geekdom. Oh, come right on there. now. It's just, it's just... Or, or you can dress up like uh, uh, the professors of Hogwarts. Uh, and that's like which two steps wizardry. too far. <laughs> like there's Lord of the Rings and you went far. That's, you've crossed the boundary. And then come on, all of you are in uh, tune no, with no. exactly what I'm saying. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. No, I said Hogwarts. Is not Harry Potter? Well, he happened to go there. Yeah, same same universe. Or whatever. Yeah, okay. Or you can get a tattoo of Allah on your chest. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you talk about Islamic dress, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So yeah. So my 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 question would be. Um, and just to get this person and whoever else may feel this way, yeah. get them to think is, okay. well, what would you have to wear to, you know, look Muslim? Okay. And what, what do you, how do you think somebody like that? I mean, we don't obviously don't know this person, but we kind of get an idea. Well, of, Murid, right? Murid, yeah. What do you think if I were to ask him? Yeah. Right. That, okay. So what would, ha what, what, what would I have to wear? Right. In order to be identified as a Muslim, maybe so, but like depending, right? So, so now my follow-up question would be: Who is to say that that is the definite 
Muslim dress. Because the Prophet wore shawar kameez. Oh, right, right. I forgot. He wore shawar kameez. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes you wear a thobe. And that's completely false. Okay. Right? He did. He definitely didn't wear a thobe. Okay. Right? His normal clothing was actually, you know, what people wear for Hajj and Umrah, the uh, ihram. Ihram, yeah. Two sheets, of, two sheets of cloth, like one at the Greek bottom, attire. one at the top. Yeah, I mean, look, you're, so the bottom part, your body's covered. And then you have a sheet on top, right? Okay. And then other times, you know, the president would wear uh, an izar, mm-hmm. you know, the bottom sheet, and then he yeah. would have a shirt on top. Okay. Actually, what, what our Bengali brothers and sisters, what they wear, that would probably be, you know, closer, that right? would probably be, you know, closer to the sunnah of the, of the Prophet. Um, Literal sunnah. When the Prophet did something, mm-hmm. how do you know if it's just something he did? Okay. Or if it's something that is part of legislation? It's something that we should do. So the typical questions that we discuss is, okay, covering the head for men. Okay. Right? Uh, we don't have a narration where he uncovered his head in public. Like he there is a practical a purpose for covering your head, right? Like this is something I didn't realize until I came to Houston. If you're outside for a little while, it gets hot, man. Yeah, okay. You need so, a hat. Exactly. So, I mean, I may not be comfortable wearing a you know, 10-gallon cowboy hat or a sombrero, but like a fedora will do. <laughs> Uh, I have my own thoughts on fedoras, but I'm not. I'm not gonna get in. I'm not okay. gonna go there. Uh, okay. I'm not trying to offend anybody who wears fedoras. <laughs> Excuse me. He's talking about uh, me. no. I'm just you know anybody who wears fedoras. I'm, a whole I'm not. Rack I'm not of... trying to. Uh, those are fedoras. <laughs> wow, I didn't even notice those. <laughs> he has a he has a thing of fedoras. I have four. I, well, I have an entire coat rack of fedoras hanging out right over there. Look, man. If you if you you know. As I would say, if you like it, it makes you feel good. If you're comfortable in it, alhamdulillah, you yep. rock it and be and be proud of it. You know, I think I'm gonna go grab one right now. And then please don't do that. <laughs> please, please don't do that. Yeah. So, you know, when the Prophet did something, is it considered something? Which <laughs> you're we like, have... wait, you actually have fedoras? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were joking, and then I actually saw the fedoras. <laughs> um, oh. But yeah, so did the Prophet do something because it was just normal habit, mm. or is it something which is encouraged in the Sharia? Okay. Right. So we talk about it's like how do you distinguish between the two? Okay. Because there's things Prophet did that were simply. His personal preferences. Well, if you're if you're a individual who follows the the madhab of, of uh, Ibn Hazm and Al Dahari school of thought, mm-hmm. you would say that's all legislation, wouldn't you? No, 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 because they're literalists. No, even okay. Uh, let's give respect where respect is due. Okay, even the Dahari scholars didn't say that just because the Prophet did something, it became sunnah in the sense that look, and that's the other thing. What do you mean by sunnah? Okay. So when we mentioned this in the so class, the two, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Sunnah, uh-huh. as in actions and things attributed to the Prophet uh-huh. there's no uh, reward attached to it necessarily, you know? Okay. And then there's Sunnah, as in the scholars of fiqh, when they say something is Sunnah, they mean it's- classification of law. Exactly. It means okay. it's mustahab. It means something which is that you're rewarded for if you do it. Okay. And if you don't do it, obviously you're not sinful. Yeah. But if you do it, you're rewarded for it. So- when we look at things the Prophet did, this even the Dahi scholars distinguish between something which is just his habits, his personal preferences, what are, as uh, compared to something that you are actually rewarded for. So you're saying that simply asking, what would Muhammad do, WWMD, would not be the appropriate approach to life? It would be, because if you're talking about what he did in terms yeah. of his well, behavior, he, he, then he yes, would... absolutely everything the Prophet did is awesome and amazing. Okay. We're not talking about that. What are we talking We're about? We're talking about in terms of... How he dressed. How he dressed. Um, that's something certain he did. preferences. That, okay, so looking Muslim is one thing. Right? Yeah. Um, the other is... Uh, Wait, let's, we're, not, we're not done with that, right? Oh. So if if it's not Thobe, if it's not um, Charwaqamis, then, then what is it? Okay. Right? And that's why Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he addressed this issue a long time ago. Mm. He said the sunnah of the Prophet meaning the way of the Prophet is to wear what Allah provided for him. Okay. See, he wore the clothes that everybody else was wearing. Yeah. Right? So Imam al Qayyim says that is sunnah. Okay. To wear the clothes of the people that you're living amongst. Okay. So that is, you know, that would, I mean, that one brain teaser that comes up is like, all right, so the kuffar of Mecca probably also dressed like the Prophet. They, not probably, they did. Okay. So the question is, are they dressing Islamic or is the Prophet dressing like a non Islamic? Yeah. And we can't say either because they're both incorrect. Okay. Because Islamic dress is not specific type, specific pieces of clothing. Okay. Right? It's Islamic dress. You know, we mentioned this in the seminar, but Islamic dress is that dress which fulfills the Islamic requirements. Okay. As simple as that. So this t-shirt, for example, mm-hmm. if it fulfills the requirements, we'd say it's an Islamic dress. Okay. It's as simple as that. Gotcha. Right? Okay. So, so 
then it's a what is Islam address that addresses that question. But yeah. then we're also looking at uh, what uh, what's in your heart will manifest in your limbs. Meaning, and I and you know, look, and and I don't like judging. I mean, I don't believe that people could be really bad inside, but what manifests in their limbs? No, no, no. Look, to... there's there's truth to that statement, okay. but but there, it's more it's more to it than that, right? Okay. But I think the point that the brother. Or sister could be sister. We don't know. Could be Khalid an alias. Bin Walid? No, sometimes you. I mean, sometimes you know, could be an alias. I don't know. Okay. Right. Anyway, side point. Um. Uh. But yeah. So I think the point that the brother or sister is trying to make is that if you were Muslim on the inside, you'd be Muslim on the outside. Okay. Like you would look Muslim, but that goes once again back to and what's what's the what's the what this person is lacking really is knowledge and understanding of the issue, and that's okay. why it's like one misconception. Leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another. So based off of the premise that, you know, Muslims wear these specific types of clothes, yeah. right? Therefore, if you're not wearing those specific types of clothes, then you're not that being means... Muslim. Exactly. Okay. Right? That you, on the inside, so you're not Muslim. So it's almost like ultimatum like... Uh, of course. Okay. And that's a, you know, it's just, these issues, it's a slippery slope. And, you know, ignorance is a slippery slope. We cannot say if the person did something, yeah. we can never say it's bad. But we can't also at the same time go to the other spec side of the spectrum and say, hey, that's Islam. Just be very clear here because yeah. some people misunderstand. We can't necessarily say okay. that that is Islam. The it's question the, is, how do you distinguish between the two? Okay. Like, is it just something the person did or is it something that was part of the legislation? And that's what we discussed in the seminar. So take the seminar so you can get a good understanding of that issue, inshallah. Okay. Men should be proud to show they are Muslim, not be obsessed with fitting in. And look, and, and that's that's correct in general. Okay. Right? But it's being applied incorrectly. But I think the, the application of that would be like, all right, it's time to pray. You go pray regardless of, of what everybody might of course. be saying. So, so that statement itself is correct. Yeah. Muslims, not just Muslim men, Muslim women too. Everyone, right. Muslim children. Everybody should, if you're Muslim, you should be proud of being Muslim. And no, we're not obsessed with fitting in. We don't want to fit a particular mold. If that mold goes against Islam, no. Right. Right? And those, and by the way, they're not necessarily contradictory. But you can, you same, can fit in and be and be proud to be Muslim at the same time. I mean, the, the other factor that comes into it, like, what does it mean to fit in? Like, there's various environments that an individual engages exactly. in, right? Exactly. You've got your work environment, exactly. right? Like, in look, order... I would turn that question around, okay. right? And say, look, okay, so what do you say to a man in Saudi Arabia? Okay. Right? You could literally say the same statement to him. Oh, you should be proud to be Muslim. You should not be uh, obsessed with fitting in. And by wearing a white thobe and a red shimmer, you're just trying to fit in. Okay. Right? Do you see the fallacy? But then, you see the that, problem that, with that statement? But doesn't that also go against the principle and understanding of you should be respectful of the culture of... Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And that's exactly and that's the other problem. Yeah. Right? That, you know, cultural norms. And as we said, Imam Al-Qayyim, he's, one of the things he said is, the sunnah is actually to wear the clothes of your people. Yeah. That meaning that's not sunnah as in that's encouraged. You're right. Right, something that is 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 praiseworthy in Islam, it's right? Worthy. As long as it fulfills the Islamic requirements, okay. But it's it's praiseworthy. So the Saudi guy who dresses Saudi, that's how, that's a good thing, yeah. Right, but from that person, if you apply that rule, so would it right? be would it be inappropriate for a Saudi guy to be like, "Yo, off with this stuff. I'm gonna be dressing like a hipster." Look, I mean, I don't like to speak for other cultures, okay. Right. Um, so maybe, maybe I'm not. That's acceptable. In that's Saudi something culture. that should be asked to the, to the scholars in Saudi Arabia. They okay. would say, you know, this is not the norm here. It's mm. it's an it's an odd dress. We don't wear this dress here. Okay. It looks very strange. So they may say, you know, you know, it's not appropriate here. Okay. Right. But like I said, I don't. But like it's not to, even, at that point. It's not even an issue of halal or haram. It's more an issue of what's appropriate. Yes. Okay. Um, there's other things that could make a particular type of dress haram, okay. but there's, those are other guidelines and principles. The idea of fitting in, like it's human nature to want to fit in. Of course, and fitting in within of itself is not a bad thing. It can be a bad thing. It's like, for example, we place our self worth in fitting in. Yeah, yeah, that's a bad thing. Okay, right? We need to, we we need to in order to feel good about ourselves, we have to be liked by people or accepted by a certain group. Yeah, or, that's or, when you or, run or, into or problems. Or at least be perceived as being part of a certain group. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So the I mean, as simple as clicks in high school. Yeah. To being like, oh, he's part of the doctor class. Yeah. Corporate or class. look, or look, and 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 the point here is, like I said, the the essence of it is is correct, right? Mm. That if we're compromising our Islamic morals to fit in. Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. 
But who's to say, like, well, what I don't would be agree an with the example of compromising Islamic morals. I mean, the, only, the simplest thing comes to mind is like, all right, you know what? You're with a bunch of professionals. It's happy hour. You go out for a drink. No, but even even take it. That's a, a clear, you know, you know, let's go back to dress and clothes. I mean, there's a lot of peer pressure there. There's a whole desire to fit in. Maybe you right. get promotions. No, that you yeah, might exactly. Be, so things like that. But let's I mean, we can even give an example from clothing. Okay. Somebody says, you know, in, in, a, in a corporate environment, um, guys don't have facial hair. Okay. Like most people don't have it. So, you know. Or law so, enforcement. Yeah. Or law enforcement, or, you know. Yeah. And, and so the person says, you know, even though uh, having a beard uh, is something which is, you know, and we, we, before you ask like the details of this issue, we discussed the beard at length and the yeah. different opinions around the beard and the length and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But in general, right, uh, having a beard of some type is an Islamic requirement. Okay. So now a person says, oh, I have to shave my beard. To fit into the corporate environment, yeah, then that that's obviously a problem. Okay, that it, now that that has superseded our Islamic. But what, what about the scenario where it's to fit in, but it's like a policy factor? For example, you got firefighters. Yeah, their their requirement is don't have a beard because it's a safety issue, especially yeah. when you deal with fire. Look, those are different cases. Okay, right? where those are you know specific specific cases can be different. Okay, right, and I'm not going to get into specifics here because, and I believe those issues should be dealt on a case by case basis. Okay, because there's so many other factors that are involved there. But in general, you know, the, the, the default is, no, we, if we're able to grow a beard, we okay. have to grow a beard. Okay, then it goes into, why don't you teach something worthwhile <laughs> to the youth? Like skateboarding. Yeah. You know, that promotes fitness and, 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 and physical but activity. But I, I have a feeling that that person wouldn't be okay with me teaching skateboarding either. Really? Yeah. But like that's... It's is there anything that's but it's part it's, of the it's skate- imitation of non Muslims. What are you it's, talking about? It's, you know, have you not seen the time. YouTube video of the guy in the thobe? That's it's a, a waste of time. It's um, sinful people skateboard. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why you know skateboarding. Is <laughs> Here's a question, kind of off topic, but on the subject of skateboarding. And by the way, if you didn't get that I was being sarcastic, because some people are just like. Phew. Like why he said skateboarding is hara. I was being sarcastic. Well, have you, um, are you able to do a half pipe? Um, like those skateboard parks? With no. The, with the no. pools? I'm, and- I'm getting old, man. I'm, I'm getting old. Um, I try to take it easy on the skateboard now. Okay. I don't take as many risks as I used to take back in the day. But you ride a motorcycle. Uh, yeah, move on. Well, we'll go to the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you're really wasting everyone's time with this rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Rubbish, all, rubbish. Need, need, all men need to know is uh-huh. cover this the is aura, look presentable, and not imitate the kuffar. Very good. Okay. So now he mentioned uh, some of the general principles and guidelines. Okay. Right? He said, number one, cover the aura. Okay. Correct. Uh-huh. Right? Um, my question would be, is my aura covered? Yeah. In that video, alhamdulillah, it's covered. Okay. Number two, what is the second guideline you mentioned? Second guideline is look presentable. Look presentable. That's kind of vague. That's very vague, right? Okay. And 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 actually, what is presentable would differ not only from culture to culture, right. but also from situation to situation. Setting to setting. Setting to setting. You can go to the gym yeah. and be like, I got to look presentable, show up in a suit and tie, you know? <laughs> well, I have worked out in slacks and a collar <laughs> shirt. And... But you understand, Bilal, you are the exception <laughs> to everything. So we never go based off of what you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the definition of counterculture in this regard. Um, oh, yeah. Third requirement? Uh, the third requirement is not imitate. Right, don't imitate non-Muslims. Yeah. And so the point here is he mentioned a, a principle, which is imitating non-Muslims. Okay. Right? Uh, Prophet said, Man bi qawmin fahuwa minhum. The one who imitates a nation, then they are from them. Okay. And so the principle itself is correct. We're not allowed to imitate non-Muslims. But how do we understand that? When so the principle itself, right? Yeah. Imitation of non-Muslims, that's a that's a that is that sounds very general. And that's why we have to know we have to know exactly what is meant in Islam by oh, you're not allowed to imitate non-Muslims. Okay. What is meant here is imitate non-Muslims in those things that are bad. Okay. Number one. Or to imitate non-Muslims in things that are specific to a religion that is a non-Muslim religion. Okay. Right? So because you know, if we were to apply this hadith, the Prophet <laughs> You know, we would say, did the Prophet imitate non-Muslims? Well, he wore the same clothing as them. Right. Right? So, what we say that... Well, pra- what about the idea of when they went to Medina and he saw the Jews fasting and he said, you know what, we're going to fast because Musa is more to us than they are Right, to- but that is something already in Islam. Okay. Right? So, that's that's something... But but if there's something that is specific, for example, wearing a cross, right? Okay. Does anyone... Is is that is that a is that a general thing or is it there's very specific beliefs attached to it? Is it it's attached to a particular group of people or a particular religion? Well, it depends if the cross is upside down or right side up. But they both have bad <laughs> bad meanings, right? So, um, 
that would be imitation of non-Muslims. Okay. Right? A type of dress where you look at that and you say, oh, it's not, you know, or for example, the robes that monks wear. Okay, right? like the that orange is, togas? Exactly. Okay. So if a Muslim is wearing like a, a that type of dress, which you're like, you just, you wouldn't be able to tell this is a Muslim or, yeah. uh, you know. In fact, uh, you would be like, yeah, that's the, that guy is straight up Shaolin or Buddhist. Yeah. Okay. So we'd say, yeah, that, that is, that is the imitation that the person, and actually, you know, that's why in the class, and, and I don't think it's, it's, it's right to, like, these, this is just one of the evidences. But now, There's many the, other here's, evidence. Here's, they here's need the, to be discussed fully. Okay. So length. here's the thing that comes to mind is that, all right, so you just described different attires that other faiths identify themselves with from an outward appearance so right. a priest will have the collar nun right, right? you got right. the monk the, yeah. the shaolin monk yeah you've got um they're like the jewish they got the yarmulke, yarmulke yeah. right is there something specific to muslims that's uh overtly uh that's religious attire look you have to understand that our religion is not a religion of just symbols okay and and that's one thing that makes islam great okay right is that you know, you think of Christianity, uh, or you think of you know, you, you, and and you can think of the cross, mm. right? You think of uh, statues of Jesus and statues okay. of Mary and so on and so forth, or you know, particular robes and this and that, or whatever. Islam, alhamdulillah, is a universal religion. Well, we, well, we've got the whole moon wars. Yeah, and well, the moon. Yeah. Okay. So the Symbol, moon. It, yeah, but still, you may go to another culture where the moon is not. You know, is not. You know, you won't find it on on masjids. Okay. Right. Um. And even like the the. Uh, you I mean, know, the moon is more of an Ottoman thing, right? Yeah. Exactly, and okay. that's how it it was brought into the culture and so on and so yeah. forth. But so when it comes to specific, like Islamically, it's not specific types. As I said, specific types of clothing. That you would say, you know, this identifies you exactly as a Muslim, okay. right? And we don't need those specific symbols. We have our guy, like even the beard, right? Somebody, some people say like, oh, the beard uh, is the Islamic, you know, symbol for men. Well, okay. maybe up to five years ago. Exactly. So what happens in history <laughs> culture, right? Yeah. Yes, that doesn't change the fact that we Muslim men grow our beards, right? Yeah. Whether it's in fashion or not, we always grow our beards, yeah. right? But that's not the symbol, like, like that's mm. it. Like okay. that's what defines you. It's okay. part. It's part of the way we dress. Um, one could argue that hijab is one of those symbols. Yeah, but even even the hijab, there's different styles of hijab. There's okay. different ways in which the hijab is. So, what is the requirement? Okay, that hijab is worn. That you know the the, uh, the head is covered and you know the neck is covered and so on. As long as those requirements are fulfilled, how the hijab looks, okay, the color of it, the way it's tied. Well, one that could argue can differ that everybody's from, wearing hijab at wintertime. Mostly, mostly, mostly. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's cold enough. <laughs> So they need to cover their aura, look presentable, and not imitate the kuffar. Exactly. So, no so one, you know, no, once again, if you if he's applying that to me, I would say, look, am I wearing a type of clothing that only non-Muslims wear? Okay. That you would look at and say, oh, that's not that's only clothing that non-Muslims will wear. Well, is it, is, now here's a question: Is there any attire that non-Muslims would wear that's not specifically um, that's not specifically religiously oriented? That's an interesting question, hmm. and that's that, and that the answer to that question will differ. According to the place that you're living in, okay. according to the culture you're living in, according to the time that you're living in, it all differs, and that's why there's no hard and fast, right? These okay. are these are guidelines that are that are applied. These are principles that are applied yeah. to the time and place we're living. And uh, in. grow their beard more than a fistful. Okay, that is an opinion. Okay, amongst the opinions, um, I don't actually hold that opinion. And by the way, if that was the case, then the majority of Muslim men would fall under the category of you don't you're not you don't look muslim you know a lot of these comments a lot of times you know uh, these are anonymous people and that gives them a certain level of comfort um makes it easy to make these comments we aren't trying to be models on the catwalk <laughs> and look this is the idea that oh you shouldn't try to dress nice okay right and that's absolutely false okay. actually the prophet you know we have that famous hadith the prophet said in allah jamil and yuhibbul jamal allah is beautiful and he loves beauty uh -huh. and another narration uh in allah yuhibbu an yara athara ni'matihi ala abdi that certainly allah loves to see the effects of his blessings upon his servants, mm. right? And okay. you look at the companions. They're companions who would dress very nice. There's uh, our early scholars, you know, and I give some of these examples in the class as well. Someone like Imam Malik, yeah. Imam Hassan al-Basri. Yeah. Some of these scholars dressed in the finest and well, nicest clothes. E e even Imam Hanifa had a textile business. There you go. So yeah. we have examples. So I wouldn't agree with that. Yeah, if you're talking about specifically like walking on a catwalk and, you know, maybe some sins that may what be if, attached to that. What if it's your business to be selling that stuff? Yeah, that's a, that's another issue. That's another <laughs> issue? Okay. 
Um, so I don't, I don't agree. I'm like, I don't agree with that. And I think most Muslim would instinctively actually even reject that concept that, oh, you're just not supposed to dress nice. Mm. But when does it go too far? Right. Okay. Can it go too far? Yes. Uh, we're not allowed to do what is called israf. Okay. Right. And some people translate that as extravagance. Well, right. Or libas al shuhra, like ostentatiousness. When we start showing off with our clothing or we start to feel proud because of our clothing. Yeah. That's when it goes but into But what if people give you territory. the clothing to promote it? And it's really awesome. It's a very good question. It's like it's a ten thousand dollars suit, but because the company that made the suit wants right. to get it out there, they gave it to you for free. Yes. So everybody looking at you is judging you, like, "Oh, look at this guy yeah. wearing the most extravagant clothes," and it's, it's free for you. You're right. There you go. Good Called example. Product placement, and actually, it's one of, actually, is one of the more <laughs> effective uses of social media, specifically Instagram, where a lot of these product makers they will reach out to hundreds. Yeah, of I mean, Instagram users. Look, I'll be honest with you. People product. people reach out to me all the time. Okay. They're like, hey, can you whatever? And I'm, you know. Like, will you be our brand ambassador? <laughs> brand ambassador. There's a lot of brand ambassadors. Yeah. I would if I didn't have my own brand, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> South the least, South the same collection. Yeah. Coming to you maybe soon one day? Soon, inshallah. It's coming. It's coming. We're working on it, man. We're working hard. It's, it's, it's got to be, it's got to be perfect. It's you know, so. sad to see a graduate from Medina wasting his time when he could be teaching far more useful things and actually benefiting people you know and you talk about utility or, or what's useful yeah right and i mentioned this in my seminar so those of you taking the seminar you know, you've heard this i talk about how talk about what's useful clothing is something that takes up our whole life mm. right you talk about the fiqh of prayer okay right one of the most important things to study okay how are you praying 24 hours a day mm. well how much of you, how, not you specifically, <laughs> average, <laughs> I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, average, you know, somebody, okay, somebody prays five times a day, Yeah. what takes them maybe 20, 30 minutes out of their day? Yeah. So that fiqh yeah. is relevant in those 30 minutes. Okay. You learn the fiqh of fasting. You got 23 and a half hours to go. Exactly. You learn the fiqh of fasting. Yeah. Right? One month out of the year. Okay. Maybe do some sunnah fast, some nafal fast, a little more. The rest of the time, you're not applying that fiqh. Mm. Uh, fiqh of um, funerals. Okay. Right? Somebody dies. I think you the more that. the more practical fiqh would be the fiqh of money. Yeah, so that's a very relevant topic as well. But yeah. clothing, we're always twenty four hours. We're either clothed or unclothed, mm. and both of those topics are from this from this from the subject, right? So whether we're conscious of it or not, we are constantly applying these guidelines and principles. So I would say this is one of this is a very important thing. That we should know and understand what those guidelines are, what those principles are that we're wearing clothing that, you know, not only makes us feel good and that, you know, we're wearing our nice clothes, but also clothing that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Honestly, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the brother or, or sister. Or sister, right? right? Who, who left this comment. Uh, and I still don't, you know, honestly, sometimes like part of me is like maybe they're just trolling. Okay. Maybe, like possible. the whole thing is a joke. It's possible. I love trolls. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bilal always replies to trolls, which that goes completely against my policy. I never reply to anyone. I, I reply to trolls, and my, my first, my first um, host, was it Hosnul Dun? Hosnul Dun, yeah. Hosnul Dun for the comment is like, okay, maybe, maybe they're genuine in their comment, and I will address the first comment with genuine passion. <laughs> okay, and then after that, the response will be clear to me as to whether or not they're a troll or not. If yeah, they're man. a troll, it's open season, baby. Ain't nobody got time for that. That's all I'm <laughs> going to say. <laughs> but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward this brother or sister because so much benefit is coming out of this comment. Yeah. So, and you know, it's beautiful how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bring benefit uh, from the most unexpected places. Well, right? one thing that you mentioned that there was an, there's an irony to this comment. Yes. Okay, yes. what's the irony? Incident that occurred um, um, with Khalid ibn Walid and the Prophet Sallam. Khalid ibn Walid, the actual Sahabi. The, the actual Sahabi, yeah. Okay. In which, and basically, you know, it's it's a it's a lengthy discussion, sure. so it can't get into all of it. But basically, the point of mentioning that narration is to mention how Khalid bin Walid himself he was able to distinguish between what is uh, religiously good mm -hmm. and what is culture. Okay, right, and what 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 is what is considered culture, and that you know that can depend from place to place and so on and so forth. And Khalid bin Walid had that knowledge. Okay, but this Khalid bin Walid. Unfortunately, the irony is strong here. Irony is strong. Okay, got it, got it. But I'm just curious, what was it? What was the like? Is it something that you could briefly sum up? Um, it. I really feel like a lot of these topics that you need to do justice to the topics. Okay, and that's my whole thing with this online stuff, and you know, just quickly mentioning something because I feel like with sad is like pulling teeth. Yeah, and it's... that's why people. I get the haircut question all the time, right? Just tell us, you know, what is it? 
halal haram. Like, and I'm like, look. Of course it's haram. That's why he's doing it. <laughs> well, not anymore. Not anymore. But it might change a it lot. It might change, him. right? Um, but, you know, qaza and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, look, this is not the place for it. Mm. Right? On Online, people just trying to argue, prove their point. So I'm just wondering, what are the things that tends to get people to go into a lot of detail? What do you mean? Okay, so like, for example, hadith. Yeah. There's a lot of detail in it. Yeah. Um, and so you spend some time, quite a bit of time on it. Yeah. So what would be some of the things that would like you could you you think you could list off a bunch of things yeah for sure okay. La, obviously a qaza okay. right the issue of haircuts and and, and i've tried to approach this in a way where it's not just like just the fiqh we start off talking about the hair of the process mm. uh the hair of the companions we talk about hairstyles at that time what are common hairstyles okay and P- I, people will genuinely be surprised okay because life question. is not so black and white life is not so and yeah this guy dresses all black and white uh not always recently but these days i've been feeling black uh, a little bit more okay um, but yeah, it's just, you know, this guy comes to Houston when it's 90 plus degrees <laughs> wearing all black. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for joining us. A lot of times the instructors don't like to, uh, or are not necessarily reachable. Um, this is one of the benefits of this program. If you have questions, I can always just send them on over cool. and we can discuss them. Just like this comment right here. What do you guys think about my case? Is it too girly? Is it too <clears throat> feminine? Or is it manly enough of a sunset for me? That's a sunset? Yeah, the sunset I've never color, seen bro. a pink sunset before. Bro, you haven't been out long enough. Pink? Have like you hot, never... hot pink sunset? Dude, DC would get that all I'm not the saying, time. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm just, I'm just, no, like, you, just a question, man. You don't remember... Well, you know you, what You seem is? really defensive about your case. No, no, no. I, I love I'm just the saying, color. You, just, you seem really defensive. Have you never seen a pink... Like, there was this one time I caught off the train uh, uh, at, at the metro stop. I like how all this whole, whole story is to defend your case. This has not been said. Hey, so you're talking about pink sunset. Okay. Like... Hot pink. Yeah, like hot... Like, come on, man. Like, like, like hot what, pink. This is the problem with being a nocturnal individual. <laughs> and this guy only comes out when the stars are out. Me and Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a person called Bruce Wayne, too. He uh, comes out during the day. Yeah, not really. Yeah. Not much. He's really, usually really, sleeping during the day. Whatever, dude. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.